Uh, hi everyone, I'm here to remind you that even though uh, crypto isn't, and no type of crypto is currently uh, a form of money in Colombia, that doesn't mean you don't have to pay taxes on it. Um, that's a joke. Um, the, um, yeah, no, but even, even uh, you know, because of this, we want to make sure that the rules for paying taxes on crypto and crypto-related activities are, are clear. Uh, we're taking steps to make that uh, make make things even clearer than they currently are. Uh, a few of you may have uh, wondered, especially if you um, even if you have just uh, used uh, a crypto platform, if you are uh, if, if you have to pay any taxes on the gains that you make from your investments, or if you run a platform. I don't know if. Uh, representatives of the, the exchanges uh, in the country are, are here. Uh, we would like to make sure that you know exactly what rules you have to, to follow. Briefly speaking, even though crypto is, no, is not legal tender in Colombia, uh, it is uh, considered for tax purposes uh, an intangible asset, which, uh, which basically follows the, the, the treatment that other jurisdictions give to to crypto and in general to many digital assets. In Colombia, you have to, uh, you, know, you, you have to uh, fill out a tax return as uh, just a, uh, you know, a natural uh, person. You, uh, you have to declare uh, your net worth, which is a, a very particular thing to the Colombian tax system. Uh, many of you guys probably have heard the debate in Congress about uh, taxation of your net worth, how it's calculated, uh, and so just you know, just uh, like if you're curious about this, you you would basically have to to tell uh, us to tell the, the tax administration the value of the crypto at the, the the peso value that you acquired it on on the day when you acquired it. You just have to tell us. There's currently no taxes on. Uh, on your net worth. Uh, there have been in the past, but this is only for informational purposes. And uh, everything else is essentially uh, capital gains taxation. If you, so if you, if you buy crypto or other assets, right? Uh, if you buy an NFT and it increases in value, you don't have to pay any taxes until the moment when you sell it. So if you sell it, you make money on it. The difference between the price at which you bought it and the price that, that you bought for it uh, is the uh, is the basis on which you have to pay uh, a rate. That rate will depend on whether you have held the the assets for uh, two years uh, or or more. If you have held them for more than two years, this is the roughly speaking the, the capital gains tax. It's called uh, ganancias ocasionales in in Colombia. Um, it's currently a 10% tax rate. If the tax reform bill that we're working on goes through, it will be at 15% of the, the appreciation. Uh, if you sell the asset before uh, two years, then you just have to pay the, the ordinary rate, which is a progressive uh, uh, taxation scheme. It starts at 19%. Uh, at, at very high levels of income, it goes all the way up to uh, 39%, uh, which is much like what you would pay in, in the United States for uh, ordinary income as well. You may have wondered, uh, I know because I have, uh, if, uh, if you're on an exchange and you buy and sell crypto, right, maybe you're just playing around with uh, uh, any type of cryptocurrency you've made, uh, you, and you sell it to someone, right? And if you, if you like to think about tax issues, which some people do, you may wonder, does this pay VAT, the, the value added tax, uh, ELA in, in Spanish? There are, Activities such as exchanges that are that do not pay uh, VAT. Uh, it, it, so uh, when when it comes to intangible assets uh, like uh, like crypto, then uh, as long as they don't have uh, an, an intellectual, a commercial, industrial value. So this is more like patents, right? Like if they don't have that 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 added value, then you're not responsible for paying VAT. Uh, however, if you're selling, say, uh, at least some sort of, uh, of NFTs, 
there may be VAT to be, be paid. So especially if you're thinking of running a business that uh, operates buying and selling uh, crypto, uh, NFTs, other types of uh, um, digital assets, uh, these are things that you may want to take into account. And uh, we want to make this easy for those paying taxes, right? You have to pay them. The least we can do is make it easy for you. So uh, we are here to, to help. Uh, I have uh, I've given instructions to uh, the, 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 the subdirectorate in charge of uh, uh, norms, uh, you know, interpreting the, the, the tax norms uh, for specific cases and specific industries to compile all the concepts we have, we have issued about crypto in a single document. And, uh, but also, uh, we are here to uh, collect the questions that you may have. Uh, and we want to issue an official concept uh, about this. Uh, we want to do this uh, both in, in Spanish and in English. We want to have uh, clear rules for those coming from abroad to, to invest. And um, even though uh, I think we're all excited for the, uh, for the closing event at, at 3.30, uh, we are here to, to take questions. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Um, so you were mentioning that we would have to pay um, taxes if I you know, purchase a Bitcoin, let's say it goes up in price, and then sell it for fiat currency. Uh, but if I were to buy a Bitcoin and then swap it to another currency, another digital currency, let's say Ethereum, um, and the price was el well, technically created a, a taxable gain, how would I pay that tax? Would I pay it um, in the value of the local fiat currency? Would I pay it in one or the other intangible as assets? How, how would you do that? That's a great question. Um, because currently, uh Ether and, and, and that Bitcoin are not currently considered uh, currency in Colombia, uh, and you're just swapping assets. Um, uh, it, it may depend, but you would probably just have to pay uh, the time you sold the, uh, in your example, the Ethereum for fiat. Um, and then I, th I think that also raises the question of what do you do if you, uh, if you buy something in crypto, right? Like if you, if you buy a house in crypto, like what would you, do? How does it work? Uh, and then in, in that case, you would have to take into account the, the value at which uh, the, the, that house uh, is, is fairly valued and the value of, uh, of your asset. And then that difference would be the basis for, for taxation. But you never specified whether, for, whether it was first in, first out, which is if I had bought Bitcoin mm -hmm. and maybe I put it off to the side for long-term storage or Ethereum, whichever asset, and then later I start trading with other assets over here. So first in, first out would say that the very first purchase of the asset, Ethereum let's say, was at $100 and now it's at $1,500. It doesn't matter my trades over here, it's first in, first out. Do you understand the first in, first out? Right, part? right, yeah. right, yeah. So you never specified whether there's a first in, first out rule that you have or not. I, th I think the, the, what's really helpful for, uh, for thinking all, all of this is that for all practical effects and purposes in Colombia, uh, crypto assets are intangible assets. So you would handle, uh, say, inventories uh, in the same, you would follow the, the current accounting rules, right? Um, uh, and, and in Colombia, uh, this, uh, I, I don't know what uh, accounting rules you're most familiar with, but we wouldn't be using US, US GAAP, uh, but we would be using IFRS uh, rules for, for accounting. Uh, so, so that's what would apply, would apply in, in this case. Uh, I, I, th I, th I think uh, we probably in the concept and in the document that uh, we will uh, post, uh, I will post it on, on my Twitter account uh, uh, to, to start clarifying some of those things, but mostly to invite questions like this so that we can, we can give you specific, detailed answers. Um, yeah. Uh, what about the crypto you gain, like paying on services? So, for example, I have an income on, right. on crypto. How sure. do you tax that? Yeah, uh, currently we, so uh, you, you can be paid in, uh, in, 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 in things other than fiat in, in Colombia, and that's, uh, that's already regulated, right? You could be paid, uh, 
so some people are paid in, uh, or at least partly in education for their children, right? Like their, uh, their firm pays their children's tuition or they give them uh, access to uh, country clubs uh, which have a certain value and all those payments in uh, basically in stuff, uh, the same rules uh, as for payments in income and in, in, excuse me, in, in fiat apply. So you would basically have to uh, tell the, the government what's the, uh, so what's the, the, the fair uh, market fiat value of the crypto and that, that would be the, the basis of the tax you pay. But you would pay exactly the same as if you were paying, um, as if you were paying, uh, if, if you were being paid in, uh, in, in fiat. So suppose, yeah, suppose you, um, so, so you work for a company that's paying you in, in crypto, then uh, they pay you uh, and you tell the government, this is how many pesos this was worth, then uh, you pay taxes on the basis of that, but then your crypto continues to gain in value. Um, if, you, if you sell it to buy something, something else, then at the moment of selling it, you would pay uh, an additional tax on, on those capital gains, basically, yeah. And if you, you know, if you found someone who was willing to, to sell you stuff directly uh, for, for crypto, then uh, this, th this follows the same. Th th there are rules and, and regulations in Colombia that, that apply to uh, exchanges of stuff, right? Like if you, if you trade, uh, I don't know, if you trade uh, a house for uh, five cars, which is something that people sometimes do, uh, you, would, you would apply the same rules in the tax code. Permutas, se llama eso. So, uh, some wallets have uh, debit cards, if you even buy Visa or MasterCard. So how do you make a chain of taxes whenever you have a wallet that lets you save in USDC or whatever, and then spend it in retail, let's say in a cafe? I think there will be taxes along the way, but who is paying what in, in that chain? So, um, I'm sorry, the question is you have a, a I don't have one, just okay, saying. Yeah. More <laughs> the, of a comment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hypothetically, there is a wallet with debit cards. So how do they pay taxes along the way when you have debit cards, uh, the payment processors, and there, there is a crypto wallet involved? Right. Um, yeah, currently, uh, none of that. So uh, those are things that would have to be regulated by the... Uh, by the financial uh, authority, uh, the, the, the Colombian SEC, the Superintendencia Financiera. Uh, because uh, the regulation is still to come, uh, you would basically not pay a lot of things that you pay in the current financial system. There's, uh, you may be aware that, that in Colombia there's the, the cuatro por mil, which is like a 0.4% tax on financial transactions. Uh, that would apply only when you convert that into... Uh, uh, you know, into, into fiat and into the, the traditional uh, financial system. Uh, but that's a, that's a great idea to raise revenue. I'll take that one with me. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, uh, but yeah. not entirely. Yeah. What's your position about using any cryptocurrency as a collateral to have uh, pesos or use dollars? How uh, you deal uh, with it? As a collateral, uh, like for uh, getting a loan or... Yes, exactly. You yeah, a, uh, this collateral. is... Uh, this is uh, still something that has to be regulated by the financial uh, authority. Uh, so uh, uh, I suppose you could sign a, a private contract uh, and then you give this as a collateral as long as someone else accepts it. Uh, you, you, could sign, you could sign a contract that, that specifies it, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so in the case of, uh, of DeFi, yeah. Uh, we're, we're actually, this is one of the questions that, 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 that we currently want to, to address in detail uh, because it's, it's a question that we've been, uh, uh, yeah, we're being asked a lot. So, so we're working on, uh, on issues related to, to DeFi, for sure. Your office, your office published a document like four months ago, the former director, regarding these uh, taxes on crypto. That, that document is still Ryan, we have to apply that? It's, uh, it's still in force. Uh, there were r roughly 25 uh, documents that we had published uh, answering various questions. So what we're doing is we're compiling all of them in a single document so that uh, you have everything in one source, but nothing has, has changed. We just want to make this more accessible. And uh, like I said, uh, some of these... Uh, 
uh, you know these questions and uh, more if you, if you guys want to uh, you know talk to to, to the, the the two uh, uh, lawyers uh, from from the end that, that, that came here uh, with me um, we will make sure to address them we want to give the, to, to have a comprehensive treatment of uh, of how to handle these tax issues to to give uh, you know to give everyone more more certainty and instability and and hopefully not have to pay like very expensive consultants when we can do it for free for you. Yeah. The, the context of, of my question is because the, the former director yeah. said in, in Caracol Noticias that people that, is, that need to declare the, their crypto, they have to do it from 2017 and they have to pay the multas from those years, 17, 18, 19, 20. And what do you think about that? Because the incentives are maybe not aligned and people don't want to declare something to be a, a bad person and paying those multas, you know? Right. Um, as part of the, uh, the, the, the tax reform bill that uh, we are, um, you know, uh, uh, shepherding through Congress, uh, we are trying to make a lot of those fines, uh, not just for crypto specifically, but for a lot of uh, different businesses and uh, also just regular people uh, a lot more uh, understanding of when people are not really at fault and we want to focus on actual tax evaders uh, the process is still ongoing so uh, uh, as I said we we welcome uh, all, all feedback that that you may have about the, the provisions that we have already included in the bill and what else could be could be useful. Uh, one thing that uh, we uh, we have gotten a lot of questions about has to do with whether we will accept taxes uh, in crypto. Uh, it's uh, it's something that we as a f uh, as, as a tax administration can uh, can do if given legal authority by Congress. We can we can handle it. Uh, we think it's actually very interesting if, uh, if you know, if, if a firm or if a person wants to be associated with a specific wallet or sets of wallets because that actually, as you guys know, uh, a lot of people still think that, that crypto is cryptic and that you can't trace stuff. We're actually interested in the traceability of a lot of, uh, of the cryptocurrencies and that, it, that can only be uh, good for us as a tax administration. So. We're very open to all of these proposals. Uh, talk to your congressman or congresswoman. There's still time to introduce some provisions here. Uh, the first one is, we've talked about a lot of taxes, right? But what's your truly vision about crypto? Like, uh, would, you, would you be considered as a pro-crypto person or what are you, are you a detractor? Um, that's one, and the other one, which is more question that I always ask, do you hold any crypto? Do, do I what? Do, do you hold any crypto? I've I've held it. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Oh no, for sure. I um, I mean, look, look I th I think it's a technology that's here to stay. Uh, I think it's promising. I think the, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about crypto. I think we should help everyone understand that this is a promising technology. I I look forward to the forthcoming regulation that various other government agencies or which I have no control, I, I should say that, uh, will, will issue at some point. I think it should be sooner rather than later. I think there's uh, one of the developments that, that I find most exciting is uh, uh, central bank issued you know, digital currencies. I, uh, I, I was excited like I suppose many of you were when the central bank announced that they are studying the the issue. I think uh, uh, I think I think only good things can come from uh, from from this industry. Okay, I have another question. Okay. So it's more about stable coins and USDT, USDC. So if I get my pesos and always convert them into US dollars, or well, in this case, USDC or USDT, and then I when I need the money back in Colombia, I transfer them back to my account. What would be the tax incentive like implications there? Because you said. Like it's like buying dollars in una caja de cambio, and then just like mm -hmm. either spending it abroad or just having them in your house or whatever. So, what would be the implications there? Yeah. So, uh, something like 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 USDT or uh, other stable currencies, uh, stable coins are they are not legal tender uh, here or anywhere. So they are uh, under Colombian legislation and and, and rules. Uh, they are considered. 
uh, just uh, intangible assets. So the way it would work is, say, you, so suppose you, you buy, I don't know, you, uh, like you go through a whole process, right? You deposit some pesos into a local platform, you use it to buy uh, Bitcoin, which then you, in a local platform, which then you transfer to a platform abroad, and you use it there to buy some USDT, and then you do some more stuff with it, and then you bring it back. The way it would work in terms of, uh, of it being taxed is you, there's a certain amount of in pesos that you paid uh, at the, the exchange rate, the, the official exchange rate of, of that day, uh, uh, the TRM, the Tasa Representativa del Mercado. And then when you transform it back into pesos at the very end, it's the difference between the pesos you got at the very end and the peso value of the original asset. That's, that, that would be the, the, the capital gains, so to speak. Uh, you've stated your position very clearly about the, the crypto coins and all these coins that are native, natively digital but there are also other type of tokens that represent, for example, real life assets, such as houses and other kinds of things. Uh, is your take the same for those types of assets that have a real asset, like as an underlying value, an underlying value, I'm sorry, in real life, but they're just represented digitally? I like the technology. Uh, look, I just run the tax administration. Like those are issues for the uh, for, for, for various government entities, right? Like, uh, I think it's exciting to, uh, to see how, uh, you know, ownership registries uh, would work, uh, how the, the financial regulation really is what, uh, as we all know, uh, is necessary for, uh, for this industry to, to, to have a more solid footing. Uh, I, and, and I do hope, and, and I, I know that, that the people involved in this uh, understand the, the issue and they're working towards uh, making things like that possible. Uh, I, think, I think in general it's an exciting uh, technology and, and I, I also think that uh, we, we still, we're, we're still trying to figure out all the possible ways in which uh, the technology can be used. So I, I'm, I'm sure there's more to come and, and those are good examples of what we could see. Oh, the taxation. Okay, so when you have underlying assets, um, well, um, in, 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 in that case, yeah, basically, the difference between the peso price when you invested and the pr peso price when you finally sold it, that's, that's what will be taxed. And it will be taxed as uh, uh, either capital gains or ordinary income, meaning ganancias ocasionales or rentas no laborales. You mentioned the CBDC, and um, there is an incentive for the tax authority to look everything that the citizens do uh, for tax purposes in, in that sense. What do you think, what is your position about the privacy of, of the citizens? What is the balance between knowing and taxing what they do and knowing a lot more that you need to, to, to know? I think that's a, that's a question for, the, for, for Colombian society to answer as a whole. Uh, I'm going to be perfect. Uh, from the point of view of the tax administration, we're interested in, in the traceability of transactions, especially given that the Colombian economy uh, is so informal and so many people use cash. I think, for instance, uh, uh, we, you know, if, we could, if we could offer uh, people a digital currency that is more convenient than cash, even safer than cash, right? Like if you're like if someone steals cash from you, there's no way of getting it back. If it's, uh, if it's highly traceable, you, you may be able to know what happened to it afterwards, right? Uh, so those, I, I, think, I think there are trade-offs in life uh, and, uh, and I think it would be particularly interesting for everyone involved to have a digital currency that is not 100% anonymous, that can be traced, but that also offers extra safety beyond the, the, the safety that, that cash can give you. Yeah, uh, I think my, my time is up and uh, we probably Last all question. want to go out there. But uh, thank you for your questions. Um, uh, Alfredo and uh, Estefania are here to take, to collect some more of those if you, uh, and uh, yeah, we will be collecting them and publishing an official document uh, answering them. So make sure to ask absolutely everything that you want to ask. And this is not the only, 
yeah, like um, th th they will be happy to share uh, contact information with you so that we can uh, maybe set up a, a round table between uh, Dian and the industry and, and start clarifying some of these uh, questions. Thank you very much.